I did not expect to be back with you again here talking about another Atari acquisition so soon. Just last week, we talked about the fact that Atari acquired some IP from Ronimo Games, and it was Awesome Knots and Swords and Shields and whatever, uh, games I didn't, I wasn't familiar with, but I mean, okay, it's part of their expanded game division, not their retro games, but all right. But then, today, this morning, as I wake up, I see this new press release, Atari has acquired Digital Eclipse? I didn't see that coming. I did not see that coming. <laughs> hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I'm John, I am a Gen X Grown Up. Thank you for clicking. Uh, and if you clicked, you probably, like me, were somewhat stunned by this news. Now, it's all over the place. Everybody's carrying the press release. It's on The Verge and on GameSpot and all these places. I found it on Globe Newswire, which Digital Eclipse themselves link to, and just a subset of what they said in there, and here's the top line. Atari is pleased to announce that it has entered into an agreement to acquire Digital Eclipse. Now, wow. So the key reason that Atari says they have done this, one of the key reasons, I'm going to say the key reason, uh, is to allow Atari to expand its internal development capabilities. Now, Atari has been putting out a lot of stuff lately. We had Common Era and Run and Jump, and we have uh, Haunted House and stuff have just come out. But to the best of my knowledge, Atari isn't making these things in-house. I mean, you look, Sneaky Box, great developer. They've done a vast majority of the recharged stuff. And uh, Days of Doom that just came out last month, they did that. And then um, a couple weeks ago, Haunted House came out, the new Haunted House. And that was not done by Atari. Orbit Studio, another fine development house, but not Atari. So it seems like maybe they don't have their own internal dev. And so acquiring Digital Eclipse... I mean, talk about getting the best there is. And, and it's not just me saying that. I mean, Wade Rosen says that. We'll get to that in a second. But acquiring Digital Eclipse, now part of me is like, oh no, don't break Digital Eclipse. I mean, they are my favorite developer right now. I mean, we're gonna talk about the things they've been doing, but certainly if you don't know already, when I start to list off the things they've been doing, I don't want to tell you to break that because the things that Digital Eclipse has been doing is just, I mean, top tier, right? So that's a concern that I have. I don't think it's a founded concern, but it's something worth mentioning. I mean, anytime there's an acquisition, somebody's going to go, oh, you're going to destroy it. And it's a possibility, certainly. I can't say that it's not, but the track record suggests maybe not. So I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. I hate that phrase, but it works so well here. So Digital Eclipse, in case you're not familiar, most recently, so they've put out over 250 games since... I think 92, they were first founded. Most recently, they did the Atari 50, the anniversary celebration. Phenomenal package. I mean, that's how you do, you know, emulation, especially emulation of, of a body of work. I mean, that thing's amazing. The Gold Master series, The Making of Karatika, that just came out, I think, uh, a few weeks ago, maybe a month or two. Uh, loved Karatika on the computer as a kid. I played it on my Atari 8-bit. And that thing, if you haven't seen that, you should pick that package up because it just, it is a love letter, not just to that game, but to game developers and understanding how these classic legendary games are 40 years old now, but still pieces of art that we admire and enjoy beyond just the game. And that's what they gave us in that. Also recently they did stuff like the Street Fighter 30th anniversary, the Mega Man Legacy, uh, the Cowabunga Collection, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. That's a bunch of emulated stuff and some new stuff in there. They, in many ways, I mean, I, I don't say in many ways, it's straight up front. They pioneered commercial video game emulation. Now, we were doing emulation as, you know, back in the early 90s. But as a product that people would sell, Digital Eclipse is the one who started that. And they have, in my opinion, largely perfected it now. Let's talk about what the Atari side says and then talk about the Digital Eclipse side. So Wade Rosen, the CEO of Atari, has said, and I'm quoting here, Digital Eclipse is the best in the world at what they do. They have a deep love and respect for the history of the games industry. I'm personally excited to see where we can push the boundaries of retro innovation together. Now, I, I am too. I am too. But like I said before, I am... Uh, uh, Worried, worried. I don't want to see damage done to Digital Eclipse. Again, we'll get to that in a second. Mike Micah from Digital Eclipse, he went on record as saying, 
So here's kind of why the rationale, why they decided to join in with Atari. Our experience collaborating on Atari 50, the anniversary celebration was revelatory. The trust that Atari showed our team and our clear mutual love and respect for the content positioned us to produce something truly remarkable. And they did, <laughs> Un uncategorically, they did. And so think about, before we think about the damage that could be done and address that, let's think about what benefit could come from Atari by having Digital Eclipse under their umbrella. Like, think about every recharged game that has come out that, you know, oh, Asteroids recharged. Oh, surely it's gonna have the original Asteroids. No. You know, if Digital Eclipse is involved in these recharged titles, wouldn't it be fantastic to just have the original game in there with that that same Digital Eclipse emulation wrapper. I mean, if you've played the Atari 50 or, frankly, uh, Karatika, any of these recently, look, you have stuff like, uh, man, stuff like uh, like uh, the filters that you could do. You want it to have, you know, scan lines or have the CRT shape, controller mapping, button remapping, just the entire, the entire package, the emulation engine the Digital Eclipse brings mapped onto the Atari library. Look, not just click and run a ROM, click and see the manual. Click and look, did you see you could play Star Raiders on the Atari 50 in a way that may be better than you ever could before by having all the controls mapped right? It's look, Digital Eclipse has already made Atari look good. Under their umbrella, they could make it even look better. Let's go to the other side now. The concern that I think most people, and myself included, have what about what Digital Eclipse does so well? What about the things it is ramping up right now? So I went to their website. By the way, links to these things down in the description of this video if you want to read more yourself. Uh, but I went over to uh, their site and they have a fact all about, a frequently asked questions, all about this acquisition. So one question that I wanted to point out was, uh, was saying, well, is Digital Eclipse now only allowed to work on Atari properties? And the answer is, it is business as usual at Digital Eclipse. While we're certainly happy to have greater access to Atari's fantastic library, we still have the freedom to seek out projects with other parties. That's that's good. That's a good first step. And by the way, it's worth noting, there were a lot of people saying, oh no, what about Night Dive? When Atari acquired Night Dive, they're going straight in the crapper, nothing but Atari now. Everything they're working on is, you know, is not gonna get done. That didn't happen. That, that bodes well, I think. The other is uh, the question about what about the Gold Master series that they started, the first one only with Karatika? And the response there is the Gold Master series will remain focused on telling gaming history's most important stories through the interactive documentary format, regardless of the past or present holder of the intellectual property in question. This says that Gold Master series need not be about Atari, they can be wherever. So while Digital Clips, it seems, will be owned by Atari. And by the way, this is agreed upon. The actual paperwork and the signatures are happening in the coming days and weeks. Looks like a done deal, though. That's why we're talking about it. Even though they're owned by Atari and under that umbrella, from everything we're reading, it shows that, and it looks like Digital Eclipse went in this with this like request or understanding. We want to be able to keep doing what we're doing that made us successful, the thing that made us valuable. And by all outward appearances, by all outward statements, both from Atari and from Digital Eclipse, it seems that this acquisition by Atari will not damage that. So there's a lot of positive for Atari. There is some potential negative for Digital Eclipse, but think about the potential positive for Digital Eclipse to have the weight behind them that is Atari to be able to acquire things that maybe they were, I hesitate to say too small of a developer. I think in recent years, they've become a force to be reckoned with. So Atari can only help that, I think, for them, I hope. So look, there's a lot to unpack here. There's a lot to find out what they're gonna do with that. I mean, I, I don't know I don't know where to go beyond this. I wanted to tell you about it, tell you what my thoughts are and get your input. Are you a fan of Digital Eclipse? What do you think of this acquisition? This was not, this was not a thing I thought might happen even. I, why would they ever? But I mean, the, the the dollars and cents made sense. Clearly the, the retro alignment made sense between Atari and DE, so I get that. So again, links to all this stuff down in the description. I'm still reeling it a little bit. I would love to hear what you think about it, or if you have more information, if you're an insider, Mike Micah, you're here sometimes, let us know. <laughs> let us know down in the comments. We're so happy that you popped in to check in on this, and we do wanna hear uh, what you guys have to say. So I look forward to seeing your comments 
down below. So, hey, thanks so much uh, for clicking on this video. I hope you found it informational and possibly a little bit entertaining. Uh, I can't wait to talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.